Hey everyone, it's Dr. Calkins. Uh, today, experiment 23, two left. This one's dropped the base because we are literally dropping the base into the acid. So before we do that, we need to understand solutions. So a quick preview of some of the lecture material we saw. There's lots of different kinds of solutions. Um, it's important to know that solutions have two parts. Solute is the little guy and solvent is the big guy. Together, they add up to the solution. So if you take piece divided by the whole times 100, that's a lot of our homework. Just be careful when you do homework that you don't take piece divided by the other piece times 100 because that's not a percentage. What's nice about liquids is like is always like, so polar loves polar, nonpolar loves nonpolar. So you'll see that in the homework as well. Today we're actually doing a liquid in a liquid. We're doing acetic acid in water, which we call vinegar. We're just trying to figure out how much is in the bottle. There's also solids and liquids, so you might think of this as, say, putting sugar into tea, salt into water. You could put solids in solids, that's how you make alloys like sterling silver or 10 karat gold, uh, 14 karat gold, those kind of things. And then lastly, you can put gases into liquids, so this is how we carbonate soda. Our job in this lab is to do two things. Recognize concentration two ways. We're gonna recognize concentration by percentage. That's what most of the allied health field is gonna use because in reality, no nurse is gonna carry around a periodic table in their pocket ever. So they use percentages so we need to understand how that, those two are related. But for those that are going in that science field, we need to recognize moles of the little guy for the entire solution. So the solution is both solute and solvent, and that's called molarity. So in order to do this, we need to uh, titrate. So when we do a titration, it's basically like what we have set up over here. We're gonna have our base in our burette. We're gonna drop it into the acid with an indicator that changes color when basic. So if this Erlenmeyer flask is full of acid, it's gonna be clear. And the indicator that we put inside is gonna keep it clear. But as we add base, it's going to turn, in this case, pink. And pink is what happens when you take this phenolphthalein indicator molecule and open it up. This extended conjugation of all these double bonds tends to produce that pink color. So as soon as we see light pink, this molecule is forming because there's no acid left. And this will tell us exactly how much acid was in the vinegar, um, and we'll compare it to the bottle afterwards. So what we're looking for is the equivalence point. That's the exact time when we're neutral. So we should see a very, very, very light pink. And uh, that's what we're after. So we're gonna get set up for lab. We're gonna use this indicator that turns pink and see how long it takes us to neutralize our acid with our base. All right, so in lab, what we have, you can kind of see our setup here. We have our base and I just transferred it to a smaller container, just like in our safety video. We have our funnel. We have our ring stand and burette clamp. We have our burette, our pipette, our pipette pump, Erlenmeyer flask with our vinegar, our um, phenolphthalein, which is our indicator. Here's the uh, great spelling word of the day. And then our water. So it says first to uh, get our burette ready. So in order for that, we're going to go ahead and clamp it. Nice and secure in our rubber. Uh, clamp. So we're going to rinse with a little bit of water. So we add water to this so that we rinse it. So we're going to tip it back and forth, make sure it's nice and clean. And drain it out. Now we're going to add just a little bit of base so that we rinse our water away. We don't want our base to be diluted underneath. So again, let that rinse out. And lastly, we're going to fill it with base all the way up to the zero mark. And 
go over a little bit, we can always drain through the valve at the bottom. That's pretty close. So now our base is ready. Now we need to set up our acid. Our acid is going to be in our Erlenmeyer flask. We're going to take vinegar. And we already know the answer to our lab because vinegar says 5% acidity. So we're just trying to prove it. So our pipette pump, this uh, pipette is exactly 10 milliliters. This little uh, red mark up here can show you exactly where 10 milliliters is. So we place it inside the pipette pump, nice and firm so it doesn't fall out. And then we go into the vinegar bottle and then draw it up. By cranking the wheel at the top, we can pull it up. Notice we're getting up to that red mark. I'm gonna go just a little bit high because when we pull down, gravity's gonna take a little bit with it. And then we're gonna release that with this little bar up here. And that'll release it into our Erlenmeyer flask. Gravity is pulling out as much as we need. It's calibrated to leave some in the tip. So whatever stays needs to stay. And this is the most accurate way to put in 10 milliliters. We're also going to add in our phenolphthalein indicator. So we're gonna put in three drops. Notice nothing fantastic happening because it's clear when acidic. And then so that we can see the color better, we're gonna add from our water bottle, we're gonna add 15 milliliters of water. And then to help visualize, we're gonna put some white paper underneath. So as we look at our data table at the bottom, we'll notice the final volume of sodium hydroxide and the initial. If we look at our burette, we're gonna see that it's at zero. So it's okay to put zero here. And then for our second trial, we're also gonna have a zero over here. But now we need to know the final volume at which this turns pink. So I already know what the answer is, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit, but even in class I would tell you this. We can easily add 15 milliliters of our base and still be pretty safe. And notice what happens as soon as we start adding some base. Nothing too cool yet, but that's only four milliliters. Notice right where it's hitting. It's getting close to 10. Getting close to 12. Notice that pink color. And a little bit of a swirl, and it's gone. So this is gonna be the very tedious process of going back and forth, back and forth, but notice we're still not quite at 15 yet, so we're gonna keep going. Notice it turns pink, and at 15 we're gonna stop. So it looks like we were about done, but notice the pink disappears. So we're gonna keep going slowly, and give it just a drip. And we're going to help swirl it. And notice each time producing that pink color. If it gets too pink, we've got to be careful. We don't want to go too far. Notice that one disappeared. So we add more drops each time. If we're really close, we can get it to go really slow just by barely opening it so that it just barely forms a bubble of base. Notice it has a very slow drop right now. Every time disappearing. So we're gonna keep doing this until the pink stays. All right, so we're really close now. We have that very faint kind of pink color. Super light to see. If we go too far, it's gonna turn magenta. So let's look up at our burette for our recording. Our final volume is about 17 and a half, so 17.5. And let's just show you what would have happened if we would have added another drop past our light pink color. So here's one uh, big drop. 
And again, a dark color just means we have a lot of base. So there's two drops. And notice, bam, turns dark pink. So we knew we were right there uh, before this happened, and that would be a good titration. So we're going to have to clean up and do it one more time, and we'll be back for that. All right, so trial two started at zero. We're down really close to about 17.5, but we haven't quite hit it yet. So we're going to add just one more drop, because I think we're there. And if this turns dark pink, we know the number is good. Definitely light pink would be better. So let's swirl it. And there's that light color just barely hanging out. And that's what we want. So let's come up here. That's about 17.8, 17.85, somewhere in there. Um, that's your last recording. And then let's check one more time. If we were to go ahead and give it another good drop, did we see the super dark pink that's too far? And sure enough, we would. So that's our lab, subtract from zero, get your final volumes of base, and we're gonna take these to the next page with our busy work. All right, favorite, uh, favorite of all the students, time for the number crunching. So not all burettes uh, are 25 mils, so not always will this be zero, but for us, since we refilled it was. So in this case, we're just going to subtract and get 17.50 and subtract and get 17.85 milliliters. Those are the two numbers that we need to take to the next page. So I'm going to do half trial one for you. You'll come back and do trial two and then get an average. So here's our reaction. Acetic acid, which is the kachui looking acid from our um, acid ion quiz from earlier in the semester. We have sodium hydroxide. And notice here's the acid, here's the base. They're going to make HOH water and then sodium acetate be spectator ions. So this is a double replacement reaction. Very important is it is one to one to one to one. So that's going to be the numbers that always go in the middle of our conversion process. So we need volume of base. So this was from the previous page. So for that first one, and this is the setup. So the first one was 17.50 milliliters. We need three conversions. Lots of squish. That little space, unfortunately. We need to get rid of milliliters. Go to moles. Get rid of moles. Go to moles of something else. And again, keep getting rid of moles. So even here, just like before, the mole runs across the top, gets scared, digs under, runs across the bottom. So digging underground like moles should do. And again, grams here. So remember this was milliliters of our sodium hydroxide. So this needs to be milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution. This will be the mole. So this was on the bottle. You notice the bottle from the video earlier that said 0 0.50, and that's per 1,000 milliliters or one liter of overall solution. So milliliters have canceled. This was moles of sodium hydroxide, so that needs to cancel down. So this is sodium hydroxide. This needs to be moles of our acetic acid. I'm just gonna say AA for short. From our balanced chemical equation above, Acetic acid was a one, and sodium hydroxide was a one. So let's go back. One mole of sodium hydroxide, so one mole of acetic acid. And lastly, grams per mole comes from the periodic table always, so one mole of acetic acid is how many grams of acetic acid on the periodic table? So this is CH3COOH added up on the periodic table, and that should give you about 60.06. This is going to equal, in our case, 0 0.53 grams of acetic acid. So exactly what I did, you do for 17.85 over here, and we'll come back. So once you have that, uh, next step is 10 milliliters of vinegar. Multiply by its density gives us 10.5 grams of vinegar. So 
the 10.05 grams that we need is the whole. So that goes on the bottom, that's the mass of vinegar on the bottom. Our mass of acetic acid, we calculate it up here. So bring that down on top. So for our situation here, we're gonna take our 0.53 grams of acetic acid on top. And then divide it by our 10.05 total grams of vinegar. Because keep in mind, vinegar has acetic acid and water. So this is our little piece divided by our whole times 100. That should give you 5.3% acetic acid. And if you remember from the bottle, this we can rewrite down here. 5.3% acetic acid Heinz. Their vinegar said 5%, and that's pretty close. So take a minute to mimic yours over here, and that'll come here as an answer. And then add these two together, divide by two to get an average. And this page is done. So, all right, before we leave page 164, we're gonna go up here and steal this answer. 0.53 grams of acetic acid. We're gonna bring it to our next page page 165, notice they want the mass of acetic acid, we already found that. That mass was 0 0.53 grams of acetic acid. They want us to uh, cancel the molar mass of acetic acid, you find that on the periodic table, we did that earlier, it was our last conversion on the previous page on the top. So if we want grams to cancel, we need to go down here. That's the trend for the entire end of our semester, whether it's the metric system, the mole chapter, or the solution chapter, or even the gas chapter that comes next, that's always going to be the case. Grams and grams cancel by this diagonal kind of process. And one mole of acetic acid on the periodic table, we add our C's, H's, and O's, and we get 60.06, like before. Very small number, because we take a tiny number and divide it by a big number, we get 0.00, .00 Eight, eight moles of acetic acid. Do the exact same thing, but with your mass from your previous page, and then we'll come back. All right, so next we're gonna take our moles and plug them in here. Everything else is determined by our experiment, whether it's our 10 milliliters of vinegar that we used in the laboratory from our pipette pump, and it's just a uh, liter to milliliter conversion so that these units cancel. Capital M is moles per liter, and that's what we're at. So let's convert this down below. So again, capital M, molarity, equals the moles of the acid, which was 0 0.0088 moles of acetic acid divided by 10 milliliters of vinegar. But capital M is not moles per 10 milliliters, it's moles per 1,000 milliliters, so we have to do that conversion in the metric system by putting 1,000 milliliters on top and one liter on bottom. Milliliters cancel, moles over liter is left, and that's capital M, and this will equal 0 0.88 capital M. So do that with your numbers over here now. All right, so my answer comes down, 0 0.88 capital M. Yours comes down, add these together, divide by two, and get an average. And this page is done. All right, last page, 166. A little bit more busy work to practice on the homework and is that might show up on the exam. So the first one is just a question about definitions. It says, what is the solute? Was the solute the little guy or the big guy? Put that answer here. Remember there are solute, solvent, and solution. You need to know who's who. So number two says, what is the percent acetic acid when we do have that 30 mils acetic acid and 70 mils water? So percentages are piece divided by the whole times 100. 
So here's a piece, but here's another piece. So we need to take our 30 milliliters, divide it by both pieces. Should we get an add? And something. So really that's just 30 divided by 100 times 100 and 30. So the biggest thing here, even though I did the whole problem for you, is to remember that you have to have both pieces. And again, this looks terrible, but that's an addition sign. And watch out for that in your homework. Make sure you're dividing by solution. If you're dividing by water, it's going to be wrong. Let's move on to number three. Number three says, what is the molarity? Remember, capital M is moles divided by liter. Well, lucky for us, we have a liter. So step one, one liter is good. However, we have 40 grams of sodium hydroxide. We need moles, and that's not a match. So 40 grams would be sodium hydroxide divided by the grams on the periodic table of sodium hydroxide. That's in one mole of sodium hydroxide grams cancel. To get this you need Na plus O plus H. This answer will be moles um, of our sodium hydroxide. And bring that answer right here. So you take this answer, divide it by one, and that's what we want. For example, then. Last problem. This one's very similar to a lot of homework questions. Turns out everything on this page is a type of math problem you're gonna see in your homework in uh, week 15. So here we have the setup. We just need to plug them in. They talk about sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, so we need a balanced chemical equation. Sulfuric acid is a diprotic strong acid, H2SO4. We're using the base sodium hydroxide. Double replacement says the H and the sodium are gonna switch, so we're gonna get sodium sulfate, which are the spectator ions, and water. Because we have, in this acid-base reaction, here's your acid, here's your base. Because we have two acids, we're gonna need two bases, so put a two here. Notice that two shows up over there for sodium, which is what we want. But we're also gonna make two waters, because we're gonna need two acids and two bases. Get rid of all those numbers that are unimportant. So this is a one, two, one, two reaction. And that's gonna be important because all of these go in the middle. So let's set it up. We have our base. They wanna know how many mils. So when they say that, what they mean is exactly what they say. They want milliliters of sodium hydroxide. If that's milliliters, then so is this. Just remember that this is capital M, and that's 1,000 milliliters per mole on the bottle. The bottle happened to be 0 0.5. We started with 20 mils of acid, so 20 mils of H2SO4 out front. Get rid of those mils, just like we kind of got rid of them over here, at least we retained them. Uh, H2SO4 goes here, but again that's a thousand milliliters if we know the moles on this bottle of acid and they give us 0 0.5 as well. So again this is a capital M conversion, different from molar mass from our other lab, uh, but very common in this chapter. Notice now we need moles of sulfuric acid to go on the bottom in order to cancel. We also need moles, and I didn't label them, but these are moles of sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide solution up top. So sodium hydroxide up top with moles. And now, we find our moles, which for sodium hydroxide is a two. Sulfuric acid, that's a one. Plug in your calculator, but I'll save you a little bit of time. 0.5 cancels with 0.5, 1,000 cancels with 1,000. So really all that matters in your homework and in this problem is the ratio of acid to base. 
in the original volume. So complete these busy works, upload to my Mac, and we only have one lab left in this semester.